the Digi Podcast, Digital Trends in Supply Chain Management. Hello and welcome to our Digi Podcast. I'm Thomas Solzer from Siemens SCM Digi Network with the Digi Podcast, a podcast on digital and innovative topics for procurement in the future. Siemens Supply Chain Management is on its way towards a value chain orchestrator, as we could hear last time from Klaus Staubitzer, the CPO of Siemens. But How do we want to go this way? How does it look like? And who is taking part of this? And here, CVE, Custom Value Engineering, will play a major role. For this episode, I invited Klaus-Peter Schneider, from my point of view, the godfather of Custom Value Engineering, for this podcast. Hi, Klaus-Peter. Great to have you here. Thanks for inviting me. I enjoy being with you. Great. So let's deep directly into the topic. If you need to describe cost and value engineering to someone who has no idea about this topic, what words would you use? We simulate the costs of products that are just being designed or that are new on the market, also of established products in order to improve them with our simulations. And these simulations provide several scenarios for optimization. What is a better design for a product? What could be a better, as you say, value chain for the product? So better uh, production technology, better locations to produce them, and what are adequate commercial conditions to buy them? From simulation to better decisions. So this sounds very technically. So what is then actually the reason for having such a function in our a company or at supply chain management you call it a function it's a network and it's many people and it's probably not just one godfather as you say but really many many that bring their thoughts in because we are all striving for the same for competitive sustainable profitable products and solutions and this is what brings us together with engineering with plm product life cycle management with procurement Why to have these simulations? Well, these simulations are there to make better decisions, to going from rules of thumb, what could be the more adequate approach, to knowing precisely what the better approach is to make a product, to build it or to shape it. And why do we need this precision? Well, it's to succeed in order to succeed in competition and to really offer the best for our customers that we can do with available technology. So on the one hand, we have digital twins of a product or digital twins of performance. We simulate performance of a product. Why not to also simulate cost of a product that we intend to build? And that is what we call the digital twin of cost. So cost and value engineering is now the owner of the digital twin of costs. I think that's a big step forward for procurement because then you don't negotiate anymore. You only discuss about the costs. Is this somehow correct? Yes, it breaks the ice with suppliers if we bring in technical arguments, if we understand what kind of our requirements drive their costs up, for example, and if we talk with them how interplay between several suppliers can be improved and we recommend them and discuss with them what is a more appropriate production technology, better lot sizes and so on. So that is a good and fair basis to improve processes together with the suppliers. And a part of this process is also benchmarking what I learned in the past. How are you supporting then benchmark with cost and value engineering? We do it in our four global labs, for example, where we disassemble our Siemens products and build digital twin of cost of our products, but also of similar competitor products. And these analysis help us learning from other solutions, from different solutions, also sometimes solutions from other industries and carry over good approaches, convince our engineers what is feasible. And that is a very elucidating, encouraging approach. If we see different technical solutions, also from internal, our different Siemens internal companies to say what is the best of the best in these technical solutions that we have to bring into a new product. Sounds quite interesting. And to bring a little bit more flesh to the bone, maybe you can share with us use case or example how this really works in real life. 
Yeah, we, I remember a, that is some years back a tracking device that was used in an in industrial context and infrastructure context and that was a well-engineered product. It got under enormous cost pressure and we were looking not just for a small cost optimization but for a breakthrough in architecture. So in context of a benchmarking, we then chose products that came from other industries, effectively a consumer product with a similar function. And the learning from the consumer product was that we could run our product with indeed a new, much more economic architecture. And there were great engineers. They were not insisting on their solution, but very open to catch the best and to say, we can do with what we have seen, we now can do it a lot better. And that was the breakthrough in success for their product. So learning from others, being open, collaborating, having an, an open mind, that is an essential success factor. Great example. I think always proudly back to the time when we started at WindPower with the whole journey with cost and value engineering and you were supporting us. At the end, we covered more than a billion euro with cost and value engineering. And in the meantime, you cover much, much more. Exactly what you did was a great example of how it should be done. Yes, we started it from a corporate function, but of course, it is good to have it right in the business and close to the business processes. And you created a role model for that. This is something that we have in the several businesses now, basically in all Siemens businesses and all related companies in our network. And probably each new attempt and each new setup is better than the previous setup that we have seen. So we are learning each other from in the network. And of course, still wind power is a strong pillar in it. Oh, thanks for the flowers and also good to hear that you are developing something other people call nowadays ecosystems. What are then the future steps about cost and value engineering? Maybe you can give a short glimpse what is on the horizon and maybe we can follow up in a later podcast. So what's going on? Oh, I look forward to that. As you are mentioning ecosystems, let me tell you cost and value engineering grew as an ecosystem. As we saw, each project brings more value than it causes in terms of labor hours and effort. We just had to set the right seed in the right places in the businesses and it is growing cost and value engineering. That is very much an ecosystem approach that we had with cost and value engineering. And now it's growing more and more into a digital ecosystem where we are hosting tools, platforms. We have our team center product cost management tool that is an in-house product that we are using and we are probably one of the key customers and keep improving it. And one of the next steps that we have started is building green digital twin. So besides digital twin, of course, we use the simulation of the value chain and supply chain that is contained in these digital twins, of course, to also build green digital twins, twin setups with carbon footprints as a first parameter that we measure and we optimize. Thank you, Klaus, because this is not the easiest one. So we have a little bit more light in the darkness. <laughs> But now the most important question from my point of view, who is Klaus-Peter Schneider? We met a long time ago and like in our professional experience, I always enjoy exchanging ideas with people who inspire, who like to be inspired and to then implement these ideas. So this is business as much as private life. I enjoy spending time with open-minded and inspiring people, be it colleagues, be it very much in our family where we, of course, enjoy traveling, enjoy discovering things. That's, if you ask me, that's what I like a lot. And this is something I only can confirm is always a pleasure working together with you because you're such a people person and always polite and see only the good things in life. So thanks a lot and thanks Klaus. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Take care. Also to our listeners, you enjoyed this episode of the Digi Podcast. If you have questions or you want to find out more information about the STM Digi Network, reach out to our internet page siemens.com slash digi network. I'm looking forward to having you as a listener at our next episode. Yours, Thomas Holzner from the Siemens STM Digi Network. Goodbye. The Digi Podcast. Digital Trends in Supply Chain Management.